SMU boys and girls, this is your friend, Chloe. Welcome to our first children's church service. We're going to do things a little different here. Our music will be different from the adults' church service because we're going to have music that makes you move. start off with a word of prayer. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. Amen. Jesus appreciated the beauty of nature and showed respect for nature in his parables, which are rich in nature's imagery. Through his upbringing in rural Galilee, he learned about God's care for creation by observing fruit trees, flowers, birds, and fishermen, and by working as a carpenter. Globally, there are more honeybees than any other type of bee and pollinating insects. So it is the world's most important pollinator of food crops. It is estimated that one third of the food that we consume each day relies on pollination mainly by bees, but also by other insects, birds and bats. Thank God for being Hello everyone and welcome back to another beekeeping video. Today is a very exciting day because my mum and I are going to be taking honey from our two beehives. We just need to get kitted up into our beekeeping suits and then we'll be ready to go. <laughs> There are a couple of things we need, and the first thing is this, it's called a smoker. And we fill the can with paper and dried lavender, and then we set it alight with a match. And then when you squeeze the bellows like this, it draws in air, and that helps to make flames and then create smoke. Now the smoke isn't always necessary, but if the bees are feeling a little bit feisty, then the smoke helps to make them drowsy, it distracts them. It smells lovely with the lavender in there. 
We also need one of these, it's a gentle brush, because when we take the frames that are full of honey out of the hive, sometimes they still have bees on, and this helps us to gently brush the bees away so they don't come with us. And we've also got one of these metal things, and this is called a hive tool, and that's because the bees like to seal the hive nice and tight so nobody can get in. So we use this to crack the hive open so we can get into the hive to take the honey away. Wow! Hello bees! So mum's taken the top off the hive and inside these boxes you can see all of the frames and the frames are where the bees store their honey. Oh, they're buzzing around now aren't they? Right, here we go, let's pull this out. Oh, oh wow! Whoa! Is it heavy? There you oh, go. Oh look at that! That is oh, it's dripping. It's dripping. dripping with honey. Oh, mum, look at that. Wowee. Pop that one back in. So we can't take that one because the bees haven't filled it with honey on both sides of the frame. So we can only take the frames that are completely full of honey because we wouldn't want to take their job when it was half finished, would we? Wow, look at that one. Let's see how we're doing on that one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Look at this one. Guys, off you come. Bye, bees. Nope. Nope. Why can't we take this one, Mum? That little that section there is sealed. So that means they've topped it with wax, haven't they? And we can we can take that from that. Yeah. But this hasn't. So they'll be filling that with honey now. So that's uh, we can't take that one. No, it's not quite ready, do. is it? No, work to do on that. Yeah. All right. So now we're just going to put the tops back on. So even though some of the frames are nearly ready, we won't be taking any more honey from the hives this year. And that's because it's really important as a beekeeper to only take the excess, to only take what the bees don't need. So they have enough to last the colder winter months. Now we just need to get the honey from the frames so that we can eat it. But how do we do that? Welcome to our utility room, uh, which is also known as our makeshift honey production factory. This is where we take the frames and we prepare them so we can get the honey from them. All we're doing is we're taking the frame and then we're using a knife to scratch off that top layer of wax, which is holding all of the honey inside the cells at the moment. It's my turn to give this a go. Oh, that is so satisfying. Here we go. So now I've scraped all of that wax off the top of those cells, I'm going to put the frame inside the extractor, but we just call it the spinner. <laughs> it's spinning time, let's go! So what I'm doing is I'm turning this handle and that is spinning the frames inside. And as they go around really fast, the honey is spinning out of those cells and eventually it's going to ooze to the bottom so that we can collect it. Mum and I are completely exhausted. We think we have spun as much honey out of those frames as we possibly can. But actually, if we look inside the, the extractor now, you can see there's quite a lot of honey at the bottom. Hey, can you see that? That golden glimmer. This is very sticky business. But it does taste good. We've given it a little bit of time for all of that honey to trickle to the bottom. And now we are going to open up this little tap here so we can watch all of it drizzling out. Yeah, there it goes. The reason we use a sieve is because the cells that the bees store the honey in are made of wax. And at the moment, the honey still has little bits of wax left inside it, and that's not very pleasant to eat. It can be quite chewy. So the sieve helps to get rid of the big bits of wax and lets just the honey drip through. The oozing has slowed down, so I'm just going to tip the can up a little bit and see if we can get the last bits out. Yeah, loads left. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Getting there. A couple of hours have passed and most of the honey has now drained through the sieve into this bucket. So all that's left to do is put it in jars ready for us to eat. The pressure. The pressure. Three, two, one, and go! Oh, that's a bit. <laughs> ah! oh, this. There it goes. There yep. you go. Lovely. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Daddy. Put, let's put the lid on these. 
So there you go guys, it's been a day's work but we have successfully filled just five jars of honey this time. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing how we take honey from the hives and put it into jars so it's ready for us to eat and I'm definitely going to have some of this on toast for breakfast tomorrow morning. Wow, that was so interesting. I never knew that about bees. Yet, for all their amazing skills, Few animals are individually as helpless as a honeybee. Each bee, to a surprising degree, is quite dependent upon the others in the hive. Our next story is about cows and where does milk come from and how do you milk a cow? Today, modern dairy cows are bred specifically to produce large quantities of milk. Like humans, cows only produce milk after they've given birth and dairy cows must give birth to one calf per year in order to continue producing milk. Did you know that about cows and milk? Hey guys, Jenna from the Flip Flop Barnyard here. I'm getting ready to milk Gertie and I wanted to just give you guys a little how-to on milking a cow. Same technique can be used for goats. So first thing I do is I get, uh, I bring a bucket out and I actually fill it with hot water so that by the time I'm out here, it's still pretty warm. I don't want to use a cold rag on Gertie's udder. I don't think she would appreciate that. All right, this is how I clean her udder. I just take this rag and get it's warm water. And this helps her let down too. And I just kind of wipe all around. Up here, you want to get all the dirt, manure, and hair off so it doesn't get in your milk. And then I clean the teat really good. I I'm gonna make sure there's no debris left on. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of squirts to just check her milk and uh, make sure that there's nothing off about it. I think a lot of people probably use a little cup to do this, but I just kind of squirt it on her hoof and make sure it's flowing well and there's just no clumps or anything. And it's about three squirts, everything looks okay to me. So I place my bucket. And the first thing you do when you go to milk is you're gonna take your thumb and your index finger and you're gonna grasp at the top of the teat. I'm pretty much pinching it off at the top to hold all the milk in the teat canal. Then I'm gonna take my other fingers and squeeze the milk out, just like that. And you're just gonna to continue to do that. You don't wanna tug on it or pull on it. Or you just wanna be firm but gentle. So we're gonna to continue to do this until it's completely milked out. been milking into this two quart bucket and I've got it about two thirds of the way full. The reason I'm milking to this is because it's easier to milk into and also um, if she were to kick it or something and spill it, I wouldn't lose all my milk. I would just lose what was in this bucket. We pour into our larger pail and it is lined with a strainer. This is actually a paint strainer that I ordered online and I just do that. We'll strain it again into a, our jars in the house but I like to just keep it really clean. So I just pour the milk into there. And then I'll milk back into this bucket till it's about that full again and keep dumping in there. And then um, that just keeps our milk nice and clean. You can see how her teat doesn't fill up as quickly. And that's all there is to it. And we'll just pour this milk into our bucket. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions on milking. Our featured story today is how Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. How Joshua took down the walls of Jericho by blowing the sheep horns and how the walls came tumbling down. You'll understand it better once you see the story. But before the story begins, let's listen to the Superbook Show Dancers. Thank have you ever had a song stuck in your head? Whoa, you're about to have that happen to you now. Here are the Superbook Show Dancers with Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. You can talk 
I did warn you. Moses himself. Click. Joshua, children of Israel, 40 years have we wandered the wilderness. Those sufferings are now past, for today as the Lord hath promised, we shall finally cross over the river Jordan and enter the promised land. You priests, men of Levi, will lead us. You will take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of our people. Loaded down like that, they can't possibly make it across the river. The Israelites have been sighted on the far shore. They're marching this way. Good. They picked the worst possible time. The floodwaters will seize them, and we can easily finish off any who have the bad luck not to drown. Look! There they are! Only four men, and not even soldiers? What is that box? What is it they carry? Move out bravely! Then stop when you reach midstream. Midstream? With a load like that, they'll never make it. The water level's going down. The river's dropping. They're not even getting wet. It's just a free current. You'll see the waters will rise again any minute and sweep them away. My men stand ready. Have them cross the minute the riverbed is completely dry. It's just like the Red Sea parting for Moses. Captain! The, the river, it's gone! Did you hear? The Israelites crossed the river. They're on their way here. They can cross all the rivers they want. <laughs> They'll never get past these walls. Come on, you. Back to work. This is truly a promised land. Look at it. So green and fertile. Our families will grow strong and healthy here. How much further is Jericho? Just past those hills, about three miles. Then your soldiers should get there in no time at all. And we can grow grain and raise cattle. Simeon. What about Jericho? Well, uh, the fact is we've been ordered not to continue. You're not going to Jericho? Joshua has just decreed that first the priests need time to perform their rituals. Rituals? After which we shall celebrate Passover, so unleavened cakes must be prepared. We should be ready to march in three or four days. Three or four days? Why do they not come? They crossed the river three days ago. Well, Captain, one of our spies has just returned from the Israelite camp. Yes, yes, and from what direction will they attack? Sire, they are not marching. He says they have stopped for a special ritual they call Passover. And what sort of ritual is that? Well, they eat unleavened cakes. <laughs> what manner of warriors do they be? They cause the mighty River Jordan to cease and then they stop to eat cakes. 
My army stands ready. We have reached the promised land. What? Are you one of our soldiers or are you an enemy of Israel? Neither, for I am here as captain of the angels of the Lord. Speak. I am your servant. What do you want me to do? We have received our orders. This morning we march against Jericho. Take up the Ark of the Covenant and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. Then march around the city with the armed guard going ahead. And I command all of you, during the entire march, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word. After circling the city once, we shall return to camp. Did he say we just returned to camp? And that's all? So, at last they come, and my men are ready. Why are they so quiet? And what do they carry on those poles? I don't know. It's what they carried before them when the river stopped. Sorcery? Magic? Well, whatever it is, it cannot come through solid walls. If only that roadway were in range of our spears. Sire, look! They're going back to their camp! A retreat? Before joining action? Well, perhaps the strength of our walls discouraged them. They never made a sound. Not a war cry, nothing. Just blew on those accursed trumpets. A parade. That's all it was. Uh, a musical parade. We are making war, Simeon. We are sowing uncertainty. We are warring on their minds. So, we wage war on their minds. And meanwhile, I am rapidly losing my own. What are they doing now? Marching. Marching. They circled the city once, and again they start back to their camp. Sire, a suggestion. Our spies made this map of the Israelite camp. We can attack them. But that might be what they're trying to trick us into doing, leaving the safety of our walls. But they may be thinking we wouldn't attack. Then again, they may be thinking we'd be thinking. That's what they would be thinking, that we wouldn't think we... What are they up to? What? Oh! We shall continue as commanded, Simeon. Learn to trust and use man's greatest strength. And it is not sinew of arm. It is faith in the Lord. But, sir... Be patient. Other battles may call for your valor and steel. But Jericho shall be conquered without it. shall be ours. Today we shall encircle the city seven times. Then upon my command, shout aloud. Shout with all your being. Shout for the glory of the Lord. For he hath said, he will give you the city. Why can't they at least play a different tune? How many days have they been doing this now? Twenty? Thirty? <clears throat> this is the seventh day. Well, it seems like they've been at it forever. And every day, the same old... Oh, there's something different today. They're marching around a second time. They've never done that. It may mean an attack. Alert the men, and tell the spearmen to aim at those hornblowers first. They've stopped. Get your men ready for an attack.
thank you for joining us for our first Bessemer Children's Church service. Let me know what you thought about it. Once again, this is your friend Chloe. May God bless you and have a great week.